I'm going to show you how to set up your old router as an access point. Setting up an access point is really easy. The very first thing you want to do is grab the router you're going to use as an access point. In this example, I'm using my Netgear Nighthawk XR500 as the access point and my NetDuma R2 is my main router. So once you've grabbed your access point router, your power cable for that router, and an ethernet cable, you're gonna to wanna to take that ethernet cable and plug it into the back of LAN port one of the router that you're using and plug that directly into the back of your computer. Boot the router, wait a minute or two, let it go through its boot process. And most routers, including the XR500, have a little pinhole reset button on the back. Hold that down for 10 seconds and factory reset the router. Once you've done that, you'll come into this menu. So once your router is completely rebooted, your browser should automatically bring you back to the main setup page. If it doesn't, after a few minutes, go ahead and refresh your browser. If that doesn't work with Netgear routers, you can use routerlogin.net. If you're using some other brand that you want to turn into an access point, I suggest looking on the bottom of that router that you're going to turn into an access point for the IP address. There should be a sticker on there with a bunch of information. Look for the IP address, put it here, click enter, and then we'll go to the main setup screen here. So for Netgear, we have an agreement. We'll go ahead and click that. And the next thing it's gonna do is look for internet. Again, we're not gonna be connecting internet to this router because we're turning it into an access point. So we're just not gonna worry about connecting that cable or anything. We'll click next and it's gonna say, hey, uh-oh, we can't find internet. What do you want us to do about that? And we're going to say, hey, you know, I'm just going to enter those settings later. It'll be fine. And you'll click next. And it's going to say, are you sure about that, buddy? And we're going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. It's good. And then uh, for the password and stuff. So we've got our username, password. I'm going to just, you know, set all that up as per normal. That way we can log in even after it's an access point. So use whatever info that feels comfortable to you. Um, I'm pretty decent at setting this stuff up already, so I'll change all this later anyway. All right, so password, we're not gonna even use that because lame. And then we're gonna want to um, click this little button here and uh, change that as well. That way we know what both of our networks are. So I like to name both of mine just like that. And then same, we'll just use. Don't get any wise ideas. I will be changing this later. Anyway, it's going to go through this boring setup process. So we'll skip through that and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so once the Wi-Fi is all done, you can either print your credentials, save them for later, just in case you're forgetful, or you can just click next. We'll click next, and it's gonna check for updates. Again, we're not connected to the internet, so we don't have anything. If there are updates um, for the router, you'll worry about that some other time. And we'll go ahead and log in. All right, and this will go ahead and say, hey, you know, your stuff isn't safe. We're going to say, I don't really care about that. Never again. Don't remind me. Blah, I don't care. Skip. All right, now it's going to log us into the main router as per normal. And what we're going to want to do when it comes to the Netgear routers is look for settings. And then it's going to go ahead and bring the setup menu open. And we're going to look for router mode. All right, so... What I always say to everybody is don't be afraid to click around your router. As long as you don't save your settings, you should be fine. So click through everything that your router has to offer. Click on everything. Learn a little bit about it. Um, what's great about the uh, Netgear routers with Duma OS or Duma OS routers in general is they have these little question mark boxes everywhere that you can click and it'll tell you a little bit about everything. So that's really handy if you're like, hey, I'm, I don't know what USB storage does. What does that do? I know there's a USB port, but I'm not sure what it does. Click on it and it'll you know give you some info. So anyway, we're going to change from router mode to access point mode because well, we want to turn it into an access point and there's Two things that can happen here. We can get our IP directly from our main router 
uh, dynamically, which means we'll just plug it in and it's going to say, hey, here's an IP address for that uh, your device here. So for the access point, and then you're going to have to figure out what that is so you can log into the access point and adjust it. I like using this option, the use fixed IP address. It says not recommended. That's what I personally recommend. If you're a little more tech savvy, um, then use this. I'll walk you through it either way. But if you're like, oh, I'm uncomfortable, just use the dynamic and uh, follow the steps after. So me, I already know my IP address for my XR500, what I want to use as the IP address so that I can log into it and adjust settings if need be. So I use a NetDuma R2 as my main router and I happen to know the um, IP of that. So it's 192.168.77.1, but because I wanna use the IP address here for this particular access point, I want to change that to 103. Again, I'll walk you through reserving an IP address on your main router, which is what I recommend in either case, so you can always log into your access point. My gateway IP is, um, well, oh, we got subnet mask next, my bad. It's 255.255.255.0. All right, now my gateway IP, which is just the main router IP address. So whatever your IP address is for your main router, I already know. Again, that's going to be 192.168.77.1, and that's for the NetDuma R2. And then it's going to ask about DNS, and we're going to say, hey, you know what? Uh, Duma OS routers use a DNS relay, so we can just enter the exact same thing right there. And then we can change the device name if we want to. And then it's going to ask us about our wireless settings. So we want to change any of that. And actually, since we set all that up already, let's just leave it. And then we're going to click apply. And it's going to say, hey, you know, if you need to get in, use the router login.net. And that should get you going. Now you're going to give it a minute or two. After a couple minutes, power down your access point. Then you're going to want to take your access point and put it in a centralized location. I have this big shelf behind me. It's kind of right in the middle of my place. And I actually put my XR500 up top of this shelf, not near really much of anything else. There's a couple small knickknacks. But what you really want is no other electronics. And you want your access point to be out in the open, as centralized in your place as you can get it. So the Wi-Fi is doing its job and not having any interference. So once you found a centralized location, you're going to take your Ethernet cable, plug it into the back of LAN port 1 of your access point, and then plug it into any of your ports in the back of your router. And then you're going to want to log into your router, and we're going to reserve an IP address. So you can always log into your access point just in case you want to change any Wi-Fi settings. All right, now we got to reserve the IP address so that we can always log into our access point. First thing we want to do is make sure our access point has been populated. So we'll go over to the device manager and then we'll take a look at all our devices and see if the XR500 is showing up. If we scroll all the way down, yep, there it is. XR500 showing up as a computer. There's no IP currently. All right, so now what we're gonna wanna do is go down to our network settings. And for other routers, you're gonna look for the LAN tab, but when you click on network settings on the R2, it just opens up LAN and WAN simultaneously right next to each other. But most other routers you are looking for LAN, and then there might be a separate section that says DHCP reservation, or it might be like the R2 and actually just be under DHCP. So that's what we're gonna go to next. And as you can see, it'll populate all of the devices that you have connected to your router. And you can give IP addresses to devices that you never want to change IP. So here's the XR500 right here at the bottom. We're going to check this box here. And we're going to give it an IP address of 192.168.77.103. All right. And then click to the side so that it stays. And then we're going to click this save DHCP button. It's going to apply the settings and then we can quickly check to see if it'll let us in. But most of the time 
it won't. So you have to reboot your router. Well, let's just see. 103, see if it lets us in. Nope, not gonna let us in right now. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do when it comes to the R2 is find these little dots up here. Every router is gonna be a little bit different. We're not factory resetting our main router. We just wanna give it a reboot. So find your reboot, give it a click, and go ahead and say, we sure do. And for the R2 and R1 gaming routers, you'll get this little message that says, now rebooting, this should take three to four minutes. So we click the got it button and just be patient for a few minutes. Now, once you're done being patient and you come back to your dashboard here in a couple minutes, you may have an error pop up that says, our app is not ready yet. That's okay. That just means the router is still loading everything and it's not ready yet. So you can just click okay on that if that message appears, but we're just gonna let it sit and I'll get right back with you once we're back into the dash. After your main router has rebooted, go ahead and reboot your access point as well. If it didn't let you in before, it's probably still gonna give you trouble, so reboot your main, reboot the access point, let it finish the reboot sequence, and then you should be able to log into your access point so that you can do any adjustments that you need. Now, I've logged in recently, so I don't have to worry about my password protection. But if you haven't logged in recently, you will have the password pop-up box as per normal. Go ahead and do your password and stuff, and it'll bring you straight into your wireless settings. So you can still mess with all your wireless stuff. And you can still mess with the WPS wizard. You can still use your guest network. So if you have any people over as guests that you want to use Wi-Fi, that's still available. Of course, the router mode, so you can go back to it being a router if you no longer need it or want it as an access point. You can change the device name so that when you're looking on your main router, you can change it to whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it XR500. You still got some monitoring options. You got your logs and statistics. You got some content filtering options with your scheduling and email, your overall admin stuff. You can mess with that if you want. USB storage is still there for your media sharing and stuff. So if you want to share media through your USB, that's still available. And then you get your uh, advanced stuff here. So you got your wireless, dynamic DNS, static routes, and LED control settings if you want your LEDs on or off. And once you're done with all that and you've set everything up, you're good to go. Again, move the access point somewhere to a central location in your place so that it, uh, has the best range possible. It can get all over your place of residence. So if this video was helpful, please take the time to smack that like button. And as always, take her easy.